Hi everybody, I'm Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and I'm here with Pat Sakura, um, who is the author of the book that you all are studying, which is Kingdom Now. I love this. She just got her author coffee, so it's very hey. cool to see. Yay. <laughs> and hopefully you already have this workbook. If you don't, you need to get it. You can get it on Kindle. You can get the hard copy, whichever is better for you. So today we're talking about lesson four, which is love one another. And I was saying to Pat before we started recording that I love her necklace. It is so pretty. And I was asking her about where she got it and everything. And then we were talking about how we use love so much in our language, in our culture. We say, I love French fries. I love milkshakes. I love apple pie. I love my children. I love my husband. I love God. How do you distinguish between all of those? It's tough. The, the English language is very, very limited in what we, what we have. And so you're right, we use the same word. And I think it, it ends up minimizing the meaning of words. In Greek, which is what the New Testament was written in, there are actually four different words that are used for, for love. There's eros, which is the romantic love. There's phileo, which is brotherly love, the, the love that you and I might have as friends. There's storge, which is family love, the love that we have within our family. And then there's agape, which is a, in a category all by itself, and it's a rare word, but it basically means a self-sacrificing love. And that's the word that Jesus used in John when he said, love one another as I have loved you. So he upped the ante uh, that the law had said, love one another uh, and mm -hmm. love God. But he's put in a new, a new twist in there. And that is our standard. Wow. That's yeah. a big standard. Okay. So just for a little bit of background, tell me a little bit of how we see this in God. Well, the thing that, that I've been looking at lately that has really blown my mind, and I've, I've seen it in, in several passages that I've been studying over the last few months, but do, do you realize that, I mean, I think we all knew this, but I didn't know it. Right. That God had this plan of redemption before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, he created the earth and he created man and Adam and Eve sinned and God's going, Oh my gosh, now what? I right. didn't anticipate yeah. that. Now what am I going to do? Oh, I guess I'm going to have to fix this thing. He didn't do that. We have several passages that talk about how uh, the, the grace of, of, of Christ was given before the beginning of time. Ephesians one, uh, four and five says he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. Uh, First wow. Corinthians 2, 7 and 8, it talks about God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that was hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. So before he created the world, before he created time, before he created anything, he already knew this plan that he had to love his creation mm -hmm. unconditionally in a covenantal, everlasting, non-breaking off love. That there was nothing we could do. Adam and Eve couldn't get him to change his mind. The Israelites couldn't get him to change his mind. The, the Pharisees couldn't get him to change his mind. He had made his mind up before the beginning of time and had lived that out one way or another through thousands and thousands of years until he hit the point in the garden. Right, okay, so that sounds biblical to me. I mean, that's, I can think of lots of verses that fit that. Right. What does that do to our free will? Our free will, I, I think we often think that free will is like, oh, I feel like doing this today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel like I need that car. I think I will borrow it for a while. I mm -hmm. think I need this. Uh, I, 
I am free to love you today and tomorrow I'm not so sure about that because I have free will. I don't think that's what free will means. I, free will is something that God gave us so that we could choose to love him and follow him or not love him and follow him. And by the same token, I think it also applies that we can choose to love one another mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. sacrificial way, or okay. we can choose to not do that. But I'm, I'm thinking that at, just as God in Jesus made his decision way in advance, that we make our decision way in advance. Okay. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I decided of my free will to follow him. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what that, what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> you foolish person. <laughs> I've, got this, yeah, I've got this thing I use on PowerPoint and it's like, my plan is I start here and I have this straight line. To right. And everything is perfect. God's plan and is God's plan is sort of like, <laughs> and I'm somewhere right in here right now. And, and we, you know, we, we look at that and we think, oh, something must be wrong. I must have done it wrong. But the reality is that that is God's plan. Just as his plan with Jesus was that some of the Israelites are going to follow him and some of them weren't. And some of the, the people in Galilee were going to follow him and some didn't. And some of us are going to follow him and some aren't. But that, that we have the free will to make that choice. And then having made that choice, I think this is the important part with agape. I think it's very rare to make a self-sacrificing decision in the heat of the moment. Ooh. Okay. You, yeah. you have the ability in the midst of the battle uh -huh. to make a decision. That's yeah. why we, we enter into covenant with God. Uh -huh. I will uh -huh. be with you no matter what. That's right. why we enter into covenant in marriage. That's why we enter into a form of covenant in strong relationships because we have to decide in advance because we don't know when we get down here in the bottom to look to do what life is going to throw at us. Yeah. Because we yeah. talked on the last video that you had had to make a decision to love God before the trooper came to your door so mm -hmm. that you were able to go through that and continue functioning and loving God and others. So we have to make a decision just as Jesus did. Right. So, so we see, we see Jesus in the garden. He's come, he's come from before the beginning of time, all the way through Israel, all the way through his life on earth, his 33 years. And then he gets to the garden and he knows what lies ahead. And he has a free will choice. Mm -hmm. And he's sweating blood. Right. He's, so it's not an easy choice. It, it, he's not going, oh, you know, this is going to be over in 24 hours and I'm back in heaven. Hallelujah. Right. You know, he, he didn't do that. But Hebrews uh, tells us uh, that Hebrews 12, 2 says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And you look at that and go, there ain't no joy in the cross. What, right. what, what is it? But he was looking beyond, beyond the redemption, the, the uh, overcoming sin and death, over conquering the kingdom of darkness. That was the joy set before him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... How does that fit with us? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to the cross. I am, right. you know, going right. through difficult times. And sometimes right. we have really difficult relationships. So right. let's bring this back to loving one another. Right. And obviously Jesus is the example of that. But how? How? You know, I think that there are as many answers as there are people and situations. Mm. But what I've found from my own life is that I need to make a decision in advance. I, I often tell clients that 
I think decide is the most important word in the English language. Mm -hmm. That I need to decide how I'm going to be and and how I'm going to act in, in a certain situation. And there are people in my life that I find it very hard to have phileo love toward mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any of the other kinds of love. <laughs> any love toward. at all. We won't name any <laughs> names, but, but, but it's not easy. Right. And, and I think what we see in the world is that when things aren't easy, people say, I'm not happy. Right. God wants me to be happy. Right. Therefore, I'm leaving. Therefore, I'm not doing this. And I So think what's wrong what we, with that? God wants us to be happy, right? No, actually, there's nothing in scripture that says that he wants us to be happy. Right. <laughs> what it, it says is that he wants us to have joy. Right. And joy is a, a heavenly commodity. It's a supernatural commodity. Uh -huh. I can't get it by, through circumstances. Happiness is based on circumstances. Mm -hmm. Joy is based on something supernatural that happens. And I get joy by making the right decision over and over and over and over and over and over. And, and having made it 10,000 times, it becomes my pattern. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I know people who, who have a very difficult situations where they're caring for a person who, who is very difficult, who may have a mental illness or a physical illness. And it's not fun, it's not happy, it's not easy. But they've made a decision in advance that I am going to commit myself to this person, I am going to love this person. And so in the study, we talk about who do you have a hard time loving? And, and what can you do? How do you change your mindset so that it's not what I get out of it, mm -hmm. but what can I put into it? Okay. How, can I, how can I love a person in a sacrificial way, not by going to the cross, but I may need to give up my rights. I may need to give up my Sunday afternoon. I may need to give up some money. I may need to give up Happiness. my emotions where everything in me goes, I cannot do this, but if I make a decision, and, and I just wonder if we were doing that, what the world would see. So often Christians bail just as, as often as non-Christians. Mm -hmm. Now, is it just us making that decision and an act of our will, or is it also God has to have something in that. He has to put something into us for that, right? Right. And, and I think that this is a place where we need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but here's the deal is that I can't live my life along the, the way, hit a bump and go, oh, come Holy Spirit, I need you now. Right. I need him every day. I need to be living in such a way that my life is being conformed to the image of God every day. And right. if I'm doing that, then I'm able to love others who are challenging people, others who are, who are difficult. Uh, one of my favorite verses is 2 Corinthians 3.18, where it says, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. <laughs> and so we, we, we are being transformed into his likeness. Too many phones around. They're not giving up, are they? <laughs> well, and don't you also see God preparing you for those situations? I mean, it, to me, at least, I feel like the things that I thought were really hard when I was in high school, you know, those are nothing now <laughs> because God's given me increasing by increments, increasingly difficult situations. Right. It right. kind of scares me to think that what I'm going through right now is so horribly hard for me. What more could he give me? But he's using this to prepare me for whatever that is. That's right. 
That's right. And And if I look at that goal mm -hmm. of being transformed into his likeness, the thing that really, really speaks to me is that it doesn't suggest that I already ought to have been (coughs) transformed into his likeness. I, I sometimes feel like I'm not there yet. But right. the point is, I'm still breathing. Right, yes. And I tend to think if it says we're supposed to love each other like God loved us, I need to do that right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm this huge failure because I can't do that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think every one of those is an individual situation. Mm-hmm. It may be that there are some people you're supposed to love right mm-hmm. now. Mm -hmm. There are some people that you need the power of the spirit day after day after day to engage in that form of love in a way that is going to be transformational. Mm -hmm. But every time you do it, you are being conformed into his image. So it sounds like what you're saying is we have to make a decision that that this is what we're going to do. But we also have to be every day asking the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Right. So that that's a habit for us. And so that he's building something in us and transforming us into Christ's image. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And I go a step further and say that while being filled with the spirit is absolutely critical, we also need to be in the word. Yes. How do we know what we're supposed to do unless we're in the word of God every day? And seeing oh, God's whole counsel. That's right. Not that's just our right. favorite verses. <laughs> that's right. Uh, right. Yeah. Get out of the Psalms and move on. <laughs> Leviticus really has something, something for you there. Right. Uh, no, we need to know the word so that when the trial comes, it's in our mind and we can, we can retrieve it. The Holy Spirit will only use that word, which is in you. If, mm-hmm. if you're not spending time in the word, he's not going to go, oh, turn to page 57 and you'll get it. Right. <laughs> no. So this is a lifelong process. I often use the example of a marathon. So if I want to run the Boston Marathon, I'm not going to sign up and show up in Boston on April 22nd and put my bib on. They uh-huh. won't let me. I have to practice and practice and work with a coach and do what they say and run and run further the next day and run further the next day and change my diet and change my sleep habits. And it's a long process, but my goal is I'm going to run the Boston marathon. Okay. And so I keep my eye on the goal as I do those things that are going to conform me. And that's what we need to do as we're loving one another is we need to, to, to do whatever is necessary right. uh, to use the marathon example. Do I need to run or do I need to sleep or do I need to change my diet? Do I need the word? Do I need more Holy spirit? Do I need counsel from a friend? How do I do this hard thing of loving a person who I have deemed to be unlovable? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. I love the, the quote that I put in the study and I, we can wind up with this. Reuben Welch said, sometimes I wonder what we're saving ourselves for. You know, we want to save ourselves and keep ourselves and hold ourselves back as though the highest goal in life would be to look good in our caskets. (laughs) It's no special blessing to come to the end of life with love unshared, selves ungiven, activities unactivated, deeds undone, emotions unextended. It's not an encouraging thought, especially at my age in life, but I have a feeling that when a person is middle-aged, he ought to be just about half used up. And when I read 1 John 3, 16, I keep asking myself the question, what am I saving myself for? Isn't it God's intention that when we come to the end of the line, we're just about used up? Mm, And that's my goal. I want to come to the end of the line, used up, having played every... In, in sports, they say, I want to leave everything on the field. And that includes loving people that I have a hard time loving. I'm believing God that I will do that. Wow, that's very, very that. good. That's very good. Okay, so we're going to have to wrap this up. There's so many more questions I want to ask you about this. <laughs> and I bet those of you who are watching this have questions too. Talk about these in your group. Search the scripture. Um, Pat mentioned several scriptures. Facebook group. 
Yeah, put it in the Facebook group so that more people can discuss it too. Pat mentioned several scriptures. We're going to put the references down in the description box below, okay, so that you'll be able to look those up. And please look them up. Don't just take either of our word for it. Okay, you need to be looking those up, read them in context, find out what they really say. So as we, as we draw this to a conclusion, one thing that I wanna ask you all to talk about because we didn't have the chance to talk about this is how does this self-sacrificing love, if we have this for one another, how is that going to affect the world around us? Okay, because that's kind of the point of this whole thing is these one another passages are supposed to affect the world around us. So talk about that in your group. Um, remember to like this video, please, if you liked it, and make comments. That, that really helps with discussion here on, on the video itself. And subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the bell so that YouTube lets you know uh, when the next video comes out. And be sure to share the video with others. Thanks for watching. Yay. Pat, it was so good. Bye all the way in Texas and I'm in Tennessee. We're so far yeah. apart, but we get to have these great conversations. I love it. I love it. Okay, y'all. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.